I'm Linda and this is Linda McClure Art. Today, this is my sketchbook and I sketched today, actually while well, I started with a sketch and then I decided to paint it, this apple. Um, oh. It's actually this apple right here. I still have it on my watercolor table. decided to use a pen instead of a pencil to draw the apple that I'm looking at here and right off the bat I have not gotten a good outline so I'm fixing it here but that's okay because uh, I think it's gonna turn out all right in the end so now I'm going to put uh, water. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know I usually start off with a wash. I always like to start with the very lightest color that I see. And when I look at this apple, right in the center, I see just a hint of green. So I did pull that yellow green up from the center. Now I'm taking some bright yellow and just throwing it in where I would put the highlights. For good measure, I'm throwing in just a little bit of orange in there too. So I've mixed up a really, really gorgeous deep red, kind of by mixing red with some green. And I'm gonna start on the left side of this apple because that's the darkest side. And I'm just kind of moving out from the left side and then from the center. And I'm going in the direction that I see the lines from the apple. It's coming out from the center, kind of like a flower. So if I look at how those striations of color come out from the center of the apple, that's the way I'm moving. The apple is not a solid red. And what's great about watercolor is that it, as it dries, that red will dry and then I'll put another coat over it and it'll have a variation of color. That's the kind of the lesson here is that I can keep using that same red over and over again. I'm just gently letting it dry in between and it's gonna give me that variation of color that I'm looking for. Also, because I put yellow and orange underneath, that also makes the red change colors on top. So that was kind of the purpose of that. All right, I'm going back with just a little bit of water in my light areas. So now the apple has dried, so I, I waited for a few minutes and I let that apple completely dry almost and I'm going back with that same red and right there from the center pulling in those stripes one more time and as you can see because the color is dry I have a completely new set of uh, stripes okay so this is a different color of red I have darkened it up now because I'm trying to pull in the shadows from the outside edges and I'm going back to that left side because that is my darkest area and I'm working on the curve of the apple here with a much darker red so I'm looking at the curves because that's where the shadow is again just darker red going back over those curves now here's the curve at the top of the apple as it curves out from the center dark red A little bit of water to blend it. Blending in the dark red into the yellow and orange, which as you can see lightened up from those previous coats. Just 
Just using water here to blend that dark curve and a little paper towel to lighten up the highlight at the very top. Painting in my stem with brown. Leaving a highlight on the stem. I'm using a rigger brush here. Rigger brushes are long, really great for detail work. I'm just using water here. More dark paint on the curve at the front. Dark paint on the curve at the very top right. I've done the same dark paint before, just let it dry, and now I'm just building up that color with uh, stripes going down into the center to pull that darkness down in, but not solid. I'm wanting to blend it. It's getting pretty saturated on the side, so it's starting to blend. So now I'm going in and with my rigger brush, because it's wet, I'm and using just a wet brush, I'm, build, I'm, I'm painting s stripes into the apple, just with water. And it's just making kind of an effect of those stripes. While my apple dries, I often, in my sketchbooks, I like to write uh, either journal about what I'm drawing or, in this case, since there's really not a lot to write about an apple, I'm just labeling it. Uh, it's a gala apple, so I am playing with um, my fonts and I might look up like the origins of a gala apple and make some notes. It just makes my sketchbook interesting and it's something to, to do. So there's my notes and uh, just finishing this up while my apple dries. Because my apple is almost completely dry, I'm willing to go in around the edges of the apple with water. And some of the color is bleeding out, but it's almost dry, so it's not going to ruin my paint. And I, I like the look of that. It just adds, I think, a little bit of interest to the painting in general, and I've kind of tapped in some purple on the edges to blend in the painting on the opposite page. Now I'm just playing around with my watercolor because I enjoy it. <laughs> So now my apple is dry and I'm taking white watercolor paint on my rigger brush and I'm going back to add highlights and little dots where I see the dots on the apple. This is watercolor so it is really transparent and it's going to dry light. It's not going to dry really bright. I can go back over my highlights two or three times and that'll brighten them up. But if I want really bright highlights, I'm gonna have to use something different like gouache or ink. But I've decided just to use the watercolor here and what's nice about watercolor on white watercolor on top of darker watercolor is it just 
will lighten that area but the color will show through so it does add a highlight so what I'm as you can see right here I'm blending that white on the curve where the highlight is and it's just lighting that area but it's not going to be really illustrative it's just going to lighten that area up in the form of a highlight If you liked this video, be sure to like and subscribe and leave me a comment and tell me what would you like to learn about. I'm interested to know what you draw in your sketchbook.